Okay, so welcome to uh, today's uh, webinar. Today I want to talk to you about one of the repertories which is very, very underrated. We can say unused, but remarkably useful. Unknowingly, we kind of use it, but maybe if we know it a little bit more, we can use it in a very, very artistic way. So we'll talk about Boric repertory today. So basically it's a it's it's a materia medica and repertory. So all the Borics that you actually read have the materia medica section in the beginning and the repertory section behind. But it's important to know how he writes the materia medica. It's a pocket manual of homeopathic materia medica comprising of characteristic guiding symptoms. And then comes the most important thing that I want to tell you. Clinical and pathogenetic form of repertory. So this is quite opposite to what normally we know about homeopathy, which is the individualistic form of technique of understanding the person. This is a totally a clinical repertory. This for a homeopath who knows a little bit of clinical medicine. Burnett writes a very interesting thing in the preface he writes the fact is we need any and every way of finding the right remedy the simple simile the simple symptomatic simile and farthest reach of all the pathological simile and i maintain that we are still well within the lines of homeopathy that is expansive progressive science fostered and science fostering so now we know that especially we need to know all different 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 types of repertories and especially we need to know if we don't get a case in a given case if we don't get a proper case history we need to still prescribe pathologically i learned this first time from my teacher in my college days dr vijay vaishnav i remember i was walking with him towards the college and he was a mentor. In fact, one of the reasons I can make videos is because of him. He really inspired me to, to take up homeopathy. I was a problem child, but that's another story. So what happened was I was walking with him towards the college gate and I saw a watchman come by and he said that he has a bad swelling here. And he examined, Dr. Vijay Vishnu examined him and he said that this is like a growth that is happening around from year to year and he called this as what is called as a pterygium and then interestingly he told me there is the main remedy for pterygium he says is zincum metallicum because in this case the pterygium has burning with it very interestingly you can have a look let's see Pterygium with burning and itching. Zincum. This was my first brush with boric materia and boric repertory. So we need to know that this is a clinical repertory, which is by Oscar Eugene Boric. You have to know that the materia medica is by William Boric. It can create confusion. And there are different editions that have come out. Majorly the 3rd, 5th, 6th, 8th and 9th. The 9th was in 1927 by B.J. The plan and construction of the repertory is as follows. There are many chapters in this repertory. Almost up to 24 chapters. From mind to modalities. What is interesting is the way the rubrics are formed. It starts, all the rubrics in every chapter starts from causation. Then the type of symptoms, 
the location, the character of the pain, the concomitant, the modality, the aggravation and the amelioration. I want to talk to you but mainly about practical clinical use. I know there are many many students and interns and especially MD students who are watching this video but I want to tell you how to practically use it and that's where the entire fun is. I want to talk to you about the following topics about boric repertory, clinical symptoms, particular symptoms, peculiar symptoms, what does the symptoms in capital mean, the mind symptoms, the comparative study of materia medica, rare remedies, relationship of remedies and dose. I'll tell you two, three of very interesting case that I did recently. This was a case of a low motor neuron paralysis of a young child, totally emaciated, unable to walk, difficulty in wa walking. And I took the case, entire case, I, I spoke, this was a case, a child coming from a village to see me. Entire body degeneration and paralysis, not able to move. He couldn't tolerate fasting and hot. So I just put these important, just the clinical things into the repertory of Boric. I put emaciated marasmus, ataxia, paresis and paralysis. And I found an interesting remedy coming up. And the remedy is plumbum iode. Then I studied it from the Boric Materia Medica. It's written, it has been used empirically in various forms of paralysis and especially sclerotic degeneration. Of spinal cord atrophies. This makes this remedy a top remedy for any kind of chronic paralysis. Remarkable that we normally think about plumbum but not plumbum iode. I want you to use it more often. So I gave it in a 30 potency BD. For the first 15 days there was no change. Then I made it three times a day and remarkably the paralysis started reversing slowly and steadily and now the child is able to move on his own with the help of crutches. Although he has not cured, but the remarkable change is very, very satisfying. And with help of Boric, when the symptoms are not there, you can give pathological prescription which have very, very interesting results. I want to share with you one more interesting case that I did about a year back. A 50-year-old man, stoic man, not able to talk at all. He just came and told me that I have extreme craving for alcohol. I want to leave it. You help me. I took his case, I asked him different, different questions. He was not talking. At this point, I decided that I needed a pathological remedy. So I put it in the rubrics, ailments from especially alcoholism and lot of desire and abuse of alcoholism. And I found an interesting remedy, Quercus, quite queer remedy. So I read it, Quercus glandulus spiritus. And I found an interesting indication there, takes away craving for alcoholic, especially given in the following dose. Quercus I gave in mother tincture. Slowly, steadily, this is our follow-up. After six months, his desire has reduced by almost 80%. Previously, the entire day he would be in a bar. He, was in a, he used to go to a desi bar and drink entire day. He started working on his own. So he now has quercus glandular spiritus, four drops in half a glass of water, daily for past six months and he's remarkably you know these are the remedies which we need to learn as well it's important to know the calcareas the phosphorus the lacases the constitutional remedy the single dose magic but this is the another form that i want to tell you i want to teach you this so there are many many clinical symptoms in boric for example i remember interesting case with tuberculosis which is just begin with lot of bleeding cough and the remedy was Akalefa Indica it's written it is indicated in bloody expectation with incipient thysis now, this is a clinical symptom undescended testes I remember one case of undescended testes with no symptoms just in boric it's written effective in undescended testes in boys thyroid in another case I remember patient had come with, with a cardiac uh, coronary block with a very high blood pressure and the remedy interestingly I, I give tabacum 
should prove the most homeopathic remedy drug for angina pectoris with high tension. Now we have to think other ways. Which remedy lowers the blood pressure? The tela arania. This is the remedy where the BP remains low. Low hypotensis. Tela arania is a remedy which is made up of from spider's web. Remember this remedy in low BP. There are many many peculiar symptoms if you want to use boric repertory. For example, cough better by lying down, emotionally better by lying down. You can see the remedy manganum aceticum. Better by eating. You can see anacardium orientalis. This is a very simple thing but I want to give you a basic idea. I will tell you one very interesting case. This was a case of cancer, a liver cancer. But because of that, there was a lot of wounds in the leg. And the, there was metastasis to the bone happening. But what was happening was, he got operated, but especially around the skin, it had become very tight. So, one homeopath was given calendula for a very long time. I, I understood the case and I gave a remedy, very interesting remedy after studying. The remedy is Caliphos. It's written in Caliphos. After removal of cancer, when healing process, the skin is drawn tight in the wound. So interesting. So interesting, I will tell you. For example, there are many, many terms and conditions which are of last generation, like tea taster's cough, Kelly iod, which means especially very dusty cough, fungus, very allergic cough. I remember another case, a patient had come to see me and he used to get a lot of sore throats. So I asked him, what happened? How did you get it? He said, my relatives are admitted in hospital. I'm there for last two months. So they are saying it is hospital acquired infection. So I opened Boric and I found a very interesting symptom. Hospital sore throat. It's written Kali Mule. So interesting. Also, many many remedies are given in capitals. For example, you can see Chininam Sulf, Acute Articular Rheumatism. This is given in capital. That means it's a clinical specific for it. One patient had come with no symptom. Just you say all over body there is an aching pain. No other symptom. Vitamin D normal, B12 normal. Just I went over Boric and I found Radium Bromide. Severe aching pain all over. One patient came, he said that I feel very nervous. I had flu few days back. After that, I feel nervous and weak. Very interestingly, I found a remedy. Scutularia. There are many remedies that I am telling you which are new. But if you have to use it in your practice and they work fantastically. You have to learn all methods. I have learned everything. I use different repertories. I learned sensation method. I used Vijaykar's method, Segal's method, mind rubrics, dreams. Boric specific Indian drugs, everything we have to learn and we have to master it. Scutularia, nervous weakness after influenza. Patients undeveloped memory glands, very often patients will come. Subal cellular type, this I think you must be knowing. One, one patient came with his son, I would say that constantly he just points towards the navel with pain, which is a remedy. Think, think, think. Spigelia. Child refers to the navel as the most painful part. And in bracket it's written granatum. Remember. Also, Boric repertory and Matira has physical particulars. Patient came to me with a huge swelling of the knee. Like an effusion of the knee. It was an OA with effusion of the knee. Only one remedy, Kelly Iod. I use this remedy a lot. Fantastic remedy. Much better with Kelly Iod. I don't have to think twice. If I get an indication, it will work. I remember another interesting case. One patient with torticollis had come. Torticollis is like a wry neck. And his main symptom, he was constantly talking, talking, blah, 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 talking. So I opened repertory and started studying which remedy torticollis was given. So how did I do that? I'll show you. I opened boric. Let's see. I'll open boric for you. Let's open boric repertory. Hmm? Where are you, boric, my friend? And I open boric. This is a therapeutic index that I use very often. And I open torticollis. And I found an interesting remedy. This is not lachesis. 
This is Lacnanthus. Then I started studying what is the Lacnanthus. So I opened Lacnanthus. And when I opened Lacnanthus from Boric, I found something interesting. First, it's written, it's a remedy for torticollis and rheumatism of neck. And then it's written, produces a desire to talk, flow of language and courage to make a speech. Exact. So fantastic. Use this therapeutic index very often. It is given in end. I use it remarkably, remarkably. I remember another case of uremia where the creat had gone high. And because of that, there was a convulsion and I had given him cupramars in low potency. You have to learn this art, my friends. You have to learn. Fantastic. You know, between watching a movie and prescribing, practicing and studying homeopathy, you can imagine what my choice would be. Sometimes. Comparative Materia Medica. Also, with Boric Repertory and Materia Medica, you can compare between few things. Let me show you a little comparative Materia Medica of just Sardi or colds. How to differentiate colds? Patient comes to you and say that I have acute cold and sore throat. Which would be a top remedy? Top remedy is Saponaria Officinalis. It's written Boric of use in treatment of acute cold will often break up a cold. Patient comes to itching in the nostril along with coriza. Arundo, remember, Arundo. Itching in the roof of the mouth, remember Vyethia. Post nasal discharge, remember Phytolacca. Lot of sneezing with nose block, remember Kali bitch. Coriza with sneezing, Hach! Justicia. The main indication of justicia is of profuseness. Patient comes with sardi, coriza, and after coriza, sinus. Remember, hydrastis, sinusitis after coriza. Constant watery nose, eucalyptus. Give this in mother tincture. It works fantastically. I remember this was a case of Dr. Sarkar, my guru from Kolkata. I spent almost seven months with him. I've written one book on him, and I will be writing a new book which will come out in January. And when it comes out, I'll invite all of you. So, I remember this case of hydrocephalus, a child from Bangladesh had come and I had taken the case in Bengali, Kemano Hobe, everything I have taken and constantly his nose was dripping. I remember Dr. Sarkar told me, Beta, de do, de do. He gave the remedy, Hedera Helix. Remember, remember, you remember I told you about this, chronic hydrocephalus with rhinorrhea, Hedera Helix, remember it. Also, there are many rare remedies in Boric. For example, let me ask you one thing. You have to tell me the answer for this without me repeating. Which is a remedy? Suppose a child, a patient comes and the child has a lot of eczema and the mother says that he's just very good in studies. If he just reads something, he'll remember it for a lifetime. Think, think. You ask your teacher about this, they will tell you. Or they won't. Okay. The remedy is Pediculus Capitis. Unusual aptitude for study. It is given in Sorinal relationship. Relationship of Sorinum. In growing toenails. Which remedy it is given in italics? Magnum Polus Australis. Suppose sometimes in case you see all symptoms. Shyness of silica. Dryness of alumina. Fear of calcarea. Like this. Remember the remedy, slag, very important remedy, sulfocalcite of alumina. So there are many compound remedies like that that you have to study. I remember interesting case, housemaid's knee, this is also slag, uh, slag and sticta, remember. One patient had come with huge glands, cervical glands and he was chilly also like silica and lot of symptoms of natrum more. The remedy was silica marina. Remember, inflamed gland, silica natrium, your symptoms. And there are many combination symptoms like sciatica with numbness. It's a nephilim. So, when a symptom gets connected to the pathology, that is also a remedy in Boric. Wounds refuse to heal. We think silica, we think hipa. Boric gives gunpowder. Remember. Also, relationship of remedies, very, very important. 
For example, Feltauri and Lachnanthus. Both have neck pain. Feltauri more with gallstone. Lachnanthus, I told you, very talkative with TV. Another remedy, Lobelia. Lobelia erinus. This is a very important remedy for stomach and especially omentum cancer. Remember this remedy. Very often, the remedies which you give in, in organ remedies, you need to give in a little lower potency, maybe 30, maybe 60, maybe mother tincture. What is the main advantage of Burik? The main advantage is small symptoms, big value, which means the remedies are very small. So even one, two indications if you get, you can prescribe. Clinical indications are given. For example, see, patient comes and tells you sleep, I get cough after falling asleep. There are so many remedies. But Boric, the main remedy is this, you can see here, Aurelia racemosa, dry cough after first sleep. But now you can't see Aurelia here, you will think of like I say sulfur. So you have to, this is a small remedy, big symptom. The disadvantage is, you tend to only prescribe specifics. Specifics need to be given when there is no indication for anything else. So especially for one-sided diseases, only where clinical diagnosis is there. Where you get no case at all, where you want to prescribe like a prophylactic or maybe in acute or maybe based on suppressed or exciting factors, think about boric repertory. But I want to tell you something interesting. I don't use like this. My technique of using boric is very different. I use boric as just an entry point and then I study the entire case. So if it's a case of plumbum, I, would, I will study if the patient has symptoms of plumbum. The, is he like the plumbum patient? Is he is he in the sixth row? Is leadership his state, etc. If it's iod, is there a state of iodine in him? Like that. So I use it as a pointer to prescribe. But I see if the remedy matches the patient. This is the secret of homeopathy. And there are many many important features. For example, this remedy has one four zero nine remedies. Many clinical terms are given. Like I told you, tea tasters cough. Remedies are often given in alphabetical order. Two typology, there is normal and italics. Prophylactics is given, especially in generalities. Toxic effects are also given. Clinical rubrics like bubonic plague, Addison's disease is given. Also a lot of pathological rubrics are given, which are not there anywhere else, like choroid inflammation. Now this last part is especially for my friends there. Friends there in college, in second year, in third year, in fourth year, in internship. Students and friends who are doing MD, who are in the last year of MD, in second year of MD, who are depressed, we don't know what to do. Should we do a job? Should we get married? What should we do? Should we cry? Should we leave homeopathy? Um, whatever. So I want to tell you. Basically, homeopathy is not for faint-hearted. You will require to really sacrifice a large part of your life if you want to do something really special. But if you want to do something special, I will tell you, you will be so successful. Your life will become so different, so phenomenal. You need to dream big. You need to start small. You have to start from scratch slowly and you have to dream big. And you have to constantly refine yourself so much daily, daily, daily. Till at a point it becomes huge. I was recently talking and I realized the difference between good and great is the only one. Sacrifice. Are you ready to sacrifice a large amount of your time? towards understanding our science then you'll be a phenomenal homeopath and then success will be at your feet I want to tell you what is the greatest joy in the life and in life the greatest joy one can get especially I read this to myself very often be so good at what you do that no one else in the world can do what you do the feeling that you get when you try to do this is just unbelievable. You try thinking about it without boasting, without ego, without self-esteem. Just try doing this 
and see the fun. So, lot of philosophical talks today. You can contact me, you can write to me, my email ID, my channels. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Dream big and do something.